Hello and welcome. My name is Emma the One, and in this tutorial, I will walk you through understanding the Galaxy History System. The tutorial that we will be going through can be found under the topic Using Galaxy and Managing Your Data on the main GTN page. And once we're in this topic, you can find a lot of uh, tutorials on the Galaxy interface, such as uploading data, histories, workflows, etc. And so today we're going to run through the basics of the Galaxy History System in the tutorial, Understanding Galaxy History System. As we mentioned right here, in different releases of Galaxy, how the History System works and looks may be slightly different. This tutorial is being recorded on Galaxy's version 24.1, and I will walk you through the changes here. So now, as we switch to uh, any Galaxy server, you can see your familiar Galaxy with the activity bar on the left, the working panel in the center, and the history on the right. What is a history in Galaxy? Well, the Galaxy history can be found on the right panel of the interface. It lists all data sets uploaded or produced during an analysis. You can think of it as a history of your analysis, ordered by the initial items added to the history, to the subsequent item items added by jobs or manually or any other means. For example, here, this FASTQ file was initially uploaded to Galaxy and then to this history automatically. And then uh, we had tools that ran on that uh, initial data set. And they were then the outputs from those tools uh, show up right here, ordered uh, the latest item to the first one. Keep in mind that Galaxy allows you to have multiple histories. You can create a new history at any point by clicking on the plus button right here that says create new history. And so upon clicking it, I can see that I have my new history now called unnamed history. Or you can switch between existing histories using the switch to history button right here. And so here we are back at the history that we were at before. And so this way we can switch back and forth between all of the histories that we have. You can use this modal to scroll down to all of your prior histories uh, in Galaxy. And so as far as managing our current history goes, let's start with naming our history and adding some description to it. By default, you can see that your history will be called unnamed history. And so you can click on this pencil button and add any desirable name to the history that will indicate uh, what it contains. You can also add a small description to, it, to the history. And you can also add tags, which are a really nice way to organize histories in Galaxy. And so for, we can call this, uh, we can add a fast queue tag, or we can even add a new tag uh, to this history. You press enter and that way you can add each individual tag. If you wish to remove any tag you can just click on the cross um, button there and then save. And so this way we have this description added to the history. The The use of this is that you can obviously have multiple histories and it'll help identifying them and organizing them based on tags. So once you get to the histories grid you can filter histories by individual tags. Right below the history description, you can see some more information about the history. Here, we can see the history size. At the top right of Galaxy, you also see your overall disk usage. I have plenty of space left here, but if this number is getting close to 100%, you might want to look into your histories by clicking here and uh, analyzing your storage and find maybe large histories that you don't need anymore and delete those. Also, we see the storage location in case uh, your preferred Galaxy server has multiple storage options. And you can choose where all items produced in the history from this point on will, where, where sh should they be stored? Should they be stored at the permanent storage, 30-day storage, and so on. This shows you how many data sets are active as opposed to deleted or hidden, for example. Here, if you click delete, you can see that now we have a, a deleted item. And once we click on this, we include any deleted items in here. And let's undelete it and see we're back at 10 active items. Now we will learn about 
the history item states. As you can see, all of these items in the history are green, which means that they have the OK or success state. But once you run a job in Galaxy, these items will change from one state to another. And I'll demonstrate that. So for instance, if we search for any tool just to demonstrate, and we run it, let's say, on the first data set, you can see that this is a new data set now produced. It is in the new state. Now it's running. And it moves from running to then, as a user, you would hope that it becomes green, as in it has the OK state. There you go. So this one was successful. And we can see all of the other states by going through the, the filter menu, which we'll look at later, and clicking on this question mark button right here to see all of the available item states. This clearly tells you what any color in the history essentially means and the icon that's next to it. Now that we looked at how to create a new history, switch to any existing history, we will also look at this third option, which says history options. And so clicking on this, you will get this drop down menu, which will show you how many total histories you have. And then this set of options that is also described in our tutorial in the beginning. <laughs> uh, you can share a history by clicking here. You can either just make it accessible and share it via this URL so that anyone would then be able to, let's say, now obviously I'm logged in here, so this is my own history. But uh, for other users, they will also be able to see this page uh, because otherwise this history would be inaccessible. Uh, and if you want to make this history publicly available in the history's grid, you click on that button and then it will be available. If you go to history and then public histories, there we go, that history that we just added with its annotation and its tag, it's available right here. For the other options you have, um, you can, oh, this is a very cool one where you can show the workflow invocations for this history. We have tutorials on workflows and how they work in case you run a workflow and it produces outputs towards a certain history, by clicking on this button right here, you can see all of the invocations for this specific history. You can also extract a workflow uh, from a history. We have tutorials for this as well. Um, but essentially, um, you take all of the jobs that were run in this history with obviously the initial uh, uploaded data set and treat that as an input and so on. You can also archive your history and switch it to a non-active archived state. You can export it or as in download it for the tool citations. You can delete the history. You can either permanently delete it by clicking permanently delete here. So permanently deleting would also uh, purge all of the, the items in the history. Or you can just simply delete it and move it um, out of the main list of histories not permanently deleting your data sets. Uh, you can obviously copy a history and you can resume any jobs that might have been paused, which, and you can also switch to the uh, history multi-view, which is also available right here. The history multi-view is a very mm -hmm. useful interface. Uh, as we learned earlier, you can access it through this history options menu or by clicking on the activity. And here you have that same list of uh, active histories that you uh, own. And by default, the history multi-view, you can toggle out this panel as well, but by default, it will show you your four latest histories that you update. But if you wish to see specific histories in here that uh, aren't your four latest ones, you can start selecting them. So here you can see I clicked on this one and it's selected within this menu. I can scroll down to an older history and you can, and now the purpose of this view is not only to be able to see these, but you can even move data sets around. So let's say I want to move from my current history, which is actually coincidentally not pinned here. I can drag and drop an item here and it says data set copied to history. You can also select multiple items and move them as well. And those were the history options. Now, if we look at individual data sets, we can expand a singular data set 
and then we fetch more information about it. You can see that this FASTA file has 1461 sequences. It has an extension or format of uh, FASTA. We could assign it a database by clicking right here or by clicking on the edit button and you could uh, add a database or build to it as you desire and it would show up right here. Let's say you added this one. Obviously you would add something that would be appropriate to your analysis. And so you have the database, you have some description of the file. You can add tags to your data sets as well. We recommend it for organizing your history a lot better. So if I just give it a test tag, that just helps organize items by whatever purpose you would have. You can click on a tag to apply a tag filter as well. We also have another type of tag which we call a name tag, which can be added via a hash. And so this way, if I do test one, any jobs that will be run on this data set from this point on will have this hashtag test one tag with them. So the tags carry on as well. That's an advantage. When the data set's not expanded, you have um, an eye icon that lets you view the data set. If you wish to do other things in Galaxy and at the same time be able to view this data set, you can click on this button right here that says Enable Disabled Window Manager. And this way, when you have that enabled and let's say you're at a tool form, you are then able to view this data set in a window. You can view yet another data set in another window. You can minimize those as well as needed. And that is the advantage of using the window manager. And so you can view a data set. You can edit its attributes. You can add a data type. You can set permissions and so on. You can, of course, as we saw earlier, also delete a data set. I'm going to the deleted items. And going back to that expanded data set view, we have a few more options right here as well. For instance, you can actually, if we look at a data set that was produced from a job, because this was an uploaded file and then a job was run on this data set, we can see uh, the extent of the options that we have right here, which are you can download the data set, you can copy a link to it, you can see information about the job that produced the data set, or at the data set itself and the job, see what, where it is stored and so on. You can run the job again. So for instance, we ran the red repeat masking tool on this data set. And you can see, um, you, can, you can rerun that job if something went wrong or you want to change some parameters in the tool form. You can also visualize this data set by clicking on this button right here. Or you can click on this button that says show related items. As we just mentioned earlier, this data set well, a job was run on it, and it produced data set 13. So if you click on this button, it will show you the related items for this data set 13. Loaded. And now we see that this is an input for this item. We can click on these icons themselves to change the state of this filter. For instance, if I click on the button on 12, you can now see the related items to data set 12. As we just mentioned, we ran red and it produced two outputs. This was the input to that tool, and these were the outputs. As we have seen a couple times in this tutorial, you can delete items in your history. As you can see, as I delete them, they appear in the count as well. Or if you don't want to delete an item and instead um, just hide it, you can press on this button right here that allows you to select items in the history, and then you can check those items out and hide them. And now you see a third uh, counter here for hidden items as well. These buttons essentially include any items for those filters. So this adds the item that is deleted or not deleted, but they are still visible. And if we remove that filter by clicking on it again and click on hidden, it will show items that are hidden or not hidden, as in include all items regardless of their hidden state, and ensure that they're still not deleted items. If you click on these both of these buttons, you're showing everything in the history. And so you're going from 1 to 14 in this case. And again, 
it's always useful to clear the search to return to the original state of your history. How do we undelete or unhide items? Well, you find those items through the filter, and instead of a delete button, we now have an undelete by a button on the items that were deleted. And so you can see the counter change there. And let's say we want to unhide something. Well, same idea. We have another extra button here that says unhide, and you click on that one, and you'll see that that item will appear right here as um, you know, an undeleted, unhidden item. Now we just clicked on this button to um, un un hide items. Well, let's see all of the other options that we would have um, when we select individual data sets or collections in the history. And so let's say you select items. Keep in mind a little tip here, a hint, is that you don't necessarily need to click on this checkbox here. You can press on your control if you're on Windows, Command, or if, if you're on Mac. You can, you can use Control, click anywhere on the data set to select or, or deselect it. Also, we have keyboard navigation as well. So once you, let's say, clicked uh, item 8, you can press down Shift and then the arrow keys to start a selection. And you can move around items with the arrow key as well. So let's say I went from 5 to 3. I don't want to select three, but I want to select two. And so I'm now pressing shift again, and I've selected, uh, I've done another individual selection. So you can use keyboard navigation really nicely. You can also tab to the individual buttons as well. And now that you have a selection, you can see all of the operations you have. You can hide, delete those items that have, all the eight items that have been selected, permanently delete them as in they would be purged from your storage. You can build data set lists, pairs, list of pairs, um, collection from the collection builder, and all of these other operations that are better described in the tutorial as well. So if we return to the original state, let's also check out collections in your history. So by default, let's say you upload data set onto Galaxy and maybe run a few jobs. Well, there might be some tools or, or workflows or jobs in general that require lists or connect collections. And we recommend organizing your data in Galaxy in collections. And so how do we do that? Well, I'm going to control click on a couple data sets here, let's say. And I'm going to go to build data set list. And it will essentially take both of these data sets, maybe not the best example, but you can give it a, na a name, sample collection and you can choose to hide those original elements or not but actually let's first start off with not hiding those original elements and create this collection okay and now you see that we have this sample collection right here which has both of those items in here and if we try another example where let's say we take these two we build a list and this time we, yes, we hide them. Hidden items. We create the collection. Now you'll notice that those two items are not visible anymore by default. They're hidden. And there we go. We have our, we have a list in the history. If you want to edit a collection, you can click on the pencil icon for it as well. Add any database to all elements, data type. Or you can click on a collection and edit its information here, add tags as well if you would want. And if you wish to delete a collection, you can choose to delete the whole item or the elements within it as well. The final thing that we'll look at is filtering in your history. If you wish to find something in your history, let's say we have a few data sets with the name filter in our history, well, you can just type that name in there. Case sensitivity is not a problem. We say data one. This is not the only information you can search items by. As we saw earlier, we have the deleted, hidden, or visible filter. So let's just unhide a couple items in there. Clicking on a tag filters items by that, by that tag. You, can, you must always clear that search to return to the original state. 
And the, the best way to filter items is by clicking on this button that toggles an advanced search menu. And so I had the name uh, sample collection and I added a name filter, for instance. You can filter by state. So in case you have any of the other states for your items, you could filter with those. Obviously right now we have none of those other states. The related filter that we saw by uh, clicking on this button well, it's also available in here. We have an extension filter for, let's say we search for FASTQ files. We can see files that had that format. An example of adding multiple filters, we can see this is the history item index, five, six, nine, the order at which the items appeared in your history or were created or added here. And let's say we want to look at items that are after number nine. And we can just write nine here and search. And see, we see those two items. You can edit by creation time. So if you want to see something that was after a certain date, before a certain date, you can do that there. This is the same deleted visible filter that we saw right here. And you can see more information on the filters in your history panel right here in the tutorial. Now that we've seen all the cool operations we can do with our history in the history panel on the right, we can also open the histories grid to find all of our histories in a nice table, as we can see right here. So this is the history that is our current history that we are on. And here are all the other histories that are my own, as in are created by my account, or maybe were imported or uploaded or whatever. But these are my histories. Similarly, you have a filter here. You can filter them by tag and you can find histories that you published, as we saw earlier, how to publish a history, the ones that are deleted and so on. Uh, on each individual history, we can switch to that history just like we could via this modal right here. We can view the history in the center panel instead of switching to it right there. We can rename it, share it just as we saw earlier through this page. We can change permissions, delete or delete permanently. We also have multi operations here with multi select. And this grid, like other grids in Galaxy, also has a list for histories that might have been shared with you from another user who shared their history with an individual user if they wanted. We can see all the public histories on the server. So this will be the cool list of um, all histories published by other people, as in you can see their usernames here. You could filter a history by, let's say, the car 15. Here we see the histories that this person created. And we can also add a tag. And if in case you choose to archive a history, uh, any histories, they will show up in this archived history section. And that was a tutorial on understanding Galaxy's history system. Again, this tutorial is available on if you go to using Galaxy and managing your data, understanding Galaxy's history system. You can find a detailed hands-on tutorial for histories right here.